I went through a, a really hard period uh, about after three years of doing this of just total burnout. I encountered a lot of fraud and difficult situations personally and professionally across the world. I was totally burnt out. I don't know if any of you have ever, ever been there. Just when you, you can't, can't sleep enough, your battery is like in deep discharge. There's nothing you can do to get energy back. Um, so everyone I know that started meditating, at least in the States, has a story. You, oh, you meditate? What happened to you? <laughs> Uh, so that's my uh, born-again meditation story. Um, but I don't think it, in other cultures it's that way, but often in San Francisco and beyond, you know, the States, people that meditate had some sort of difficult situation. So for me, that was the same. I discovered Jack Kornfield, great author. He was here last year. Uh, so there's a picture of him at the Buddhist Geeks Conference. But he said something that's really affected my work about compassion. And compassion and pity are very different. Whereas compassion reflects the yearning of the heart to merge and to take on some of the suffering, pity is a controlled set of thoughts designed to assure separateness. Compassion is the spontaneous response of love, pity the involuntary reflex of fear. And so um, I, I reflect on this a lot, trying to foster and cultivate that dynamic of compassion, connectedness between people, where you want to help somebody because you realize there's a sense of a part of yourself in that person, and that person, in fact, is one with you, and I don't need to portray you as a victim that I can save to make myself feel better, but actually I realize that in helping you, I'm helping myself, because we're really not that separate after all. And so that dynamic uh, is really the driving force behind my life and my work right now, and I'm just trying to get better and better with those connections uh, so that people can see this for themselves. Um, at the Zen Center in San Francisco, we have this idea of the bodhisattva vow, uh, the idea that um, I vow to save all living beings, which is a quite stressful vow. <laughs> so here I was burnt out, and then I'm thinking Zen is going to uh, you know, solve all these problems, go to the Zen Center, and I learn now I'm signing up to save all living beings, which I was trying to do before, and it totally <laughs> exhausted me. Um, but I'll end on that note. This is about halfway through the presentation, but it's a good place to stop because I have to go, But because um, uh, I'm going to be forced off the stage. Um, but uh, there's something about realizing that, yes, we are trying to save all living beings, but actually there's no separation between me and those living beings. So the more we meditate, the more we practice, the more we realize that truth the less stressful it is because we realize that those living beings are just ourself and in the pra practice of saving ourselves, we are doing that. In the practice of saving those living beings, we are saving ourselves. Those two things are one and the same, uh, which is a really refreshing and freeing thing to think. Thank you.